I'm Duncan McLeod, and this is the Tech Central Show, brought to you today by MTN Business. To learn more about MTN Business, visit www.mtnbusiness.co.za, and we thank them for partnering with Tech Central, TCS, and for bringing you these great interviews. Now, quite by coincidence, we're <laughs> chatting to an MTN executive today. His name is Bradwin Roper, and he's in charge of fintech and mobile money at MTN South Africa. And Bradwin's just announced that PayShop, the rapid payments platform developed by BankServe Africa, is coming to the Momo platform on MTN. Bradwin, welcome. It's great to see you. Uh, thank you for having me. It's really good to be here again. Good to see you. Fantastic. Thanks, Bradwin. Um, so tell us a bit about this announcement and what it entails exactly. You know, um, we are very excited that we have, you know, South African Reserve Bank that is quite progressive in its vision 2025. Um, you know, the Saab are talking about leveraging innovation for rapid real-time payments. They talk about interoperability, um, and what we're hoping to do is be, you know, the first major institution that is actually bringing that vision to life. Um, um, and so what we've done is, you know, through a unique partnership with an open cloud payment service provider being Electrum, they're an incredible powerhouse uh, in themselves, um, together with, you know, a banking partner who enable, you know, sort of commercial clients into PayShop. Um, we're now able to bring the PayShop rapid payments technology um, to our user base, um, specifically uh, now for funding mm -hmm. um, on the Momo wallet, and then in time to come as well on, on cash out um, on the Momo platform as well. Um, so we're very excited. I mean, we're the first um, technically non-bank participant into PayShop, which is, I think, exactly what rapid payments needs is mm -hmm. some kind of you know, fintech impetus for mm -hmm. adoption. I was, going to, I was about to ask, uh, you, you stated in your announcement that this is the first non-banking yeah. platform to engage with PayShop. Yeah. Just uh, explain the significance of that and, um, and what it might mean for the development of the fintech ecosystem in South Africa. Yeah. I mean, you know, every major fintech um, has one issue to solve. Um, how do you get money into your ecosystem? And the banks have been sitting on that advantage in South Africa for, I mean, they've done an incredible job, to be honest. If you think about um, in South Africa, you know, why have fintechs sort of failed historically? That's because the banks have done an incredible job. So if you think of, you know, e-wallet and cash send and all of these sort of local moving money in intra within the country, the banks have done an incredible job. We sit in South Africa on... You know, you know, card adoption um, by value sits at sort of 57%. Um, and so the banks have really um, led in that regard. Um, and consumers have trusted their money in banks. Um, what PayShop allows is instant, rapid, within 60 seconds, um, real-time flow into an ecosystem like ourselves. Um, so, you know, you can still take your salary into a bank account mm -hmm. if you so wish, but... If you wish to save money um, by purchasing airtime, electricity, lotto, and all of these other features and benefits that we've been adding onto our platform, you can now fund that wallet seamlessly, um, real time, um, and depending on what your bank would charge you. But I mean, I think everyone is pretty much settled at, you know, zero at under a hundred rand, mm -hmm. um, you know, pretty much free. Um, so it's now free and easy and ubiquitous to fund your wallet bank agnostic. And so every fintech's dream is to get, you know, quick, real-time, cheap funding into your ecosystem. Um, so this is a real big milestone for us. Um, one stat I'll share with you is um, in our world, 85% um, of people that fund their Momo wallet spend on platform. So, you know, we're serving the underserved Um uh, most South Africans today, 60% of South Africans to be exact, um, would take their money into a bank account and withdraw it in one file swoop at an ATM. Mm -hmm. Whereas what we're seeing is people are putting money into our platform and spending on the platform. Um, and so this for us is a massive unlock in getting customers onto the platform to enable them to spend on the platform. And mm -hmm. any fintech would want this kind of capability. Mm -hmm. Just give us the one-minute elevator pitch. What uh -huh. is MTN Momo? Why should consumers consider it? You know, um, we are looking to democratize access to financial services like never before. And we're also looking to save you on where you would spend traditionally. I mean, if you just bought airtime electricity and lotto on a bank app, mm -hmm. 
Um, that would cost you about 55 rand in transaction fees. If you did all of those services on Momo, they're free. Um, so buy your airtime electricity, lotto, and those sort of digital goods and services. You say 55 rand a month, which is, you know, a loaf of bread a week mm. for your household if you did all of that on Momo. And now you can fund that, that wallet for free as well and instantly. And what about the top end of the market, people who are well banked, people who are, you know, perhaps have multiple bank accounts, credit cards, et cetera, et cetera. Is there something in here for them as well? Or is this really aimed at the unbanked or underbanked part of the market? I mean, you know, we see that 15% of South Africans are still unbanked and obviously 60% of South Africans are underbanked. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where we're hoping to make the biggest dent on the fabric of society. And that's where if you take, for example our loan solution. So we've partnered with a company called Jumo, um, who are a titan in sort of lending on the continent. Um, in our partnership, so we're the fastest growing um, Jumo integration. We integrated in six weeks and we are also, you know, the fastest growing since going live. 80% um, of customers that have taken out a loan from us, our average loan size is well under a thousand rand, which the banks don't do. Um, but 80% of our customers have a thin profile, so they've never had a loan before, um, which means typically if they went to a formal bank, they would largely get declined. Um, so 80% of the time we're saying yes um, on a small amount. Um, and more importantly, we're also writing that back to the bureau. So all of a sudden, 80% of customers that have never had a loan before will start getting a credit record. Mm -hmm. And so we then wish that over time, you know, you'll say that that Momo Quick Loan is the reason I now have a car, is the reason I now have a house, because, mm -hmm. you know, someone took a chance on me, um, granted me a loan, and I was able to build up a credit record, and now I can use credit to fund for an asset. So we're focusing for now on, you know, unbanked and underbanked. But we do have, I mean, Believe me when I say, you know, we have um, pensioners that use our platform. Um, we have, you know, um, seasoned, um, like our license renewal capability, our remittance capability, um, our funeral plan. We have a family construct on funeral plans as well. Um, and so we do see, you know, um, you know, your sort of more astute and affluent customers also making use of the platform. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you deal with credit risk issues? Uh -huh. So on the credit risk side, so you're talking about the, the lending? The loans, yeah. Yeah. Um, fascinating question. So Jumo are our partner here, and they use artificial intelligence. So they're consuming pieces of data in real time while you're doing the application. They're using alternative data sources, um, and, and they're able to predict, you know, essentially affordability and eligibility. And they also manage you throughout the life cycle of the loan. Um, and so we're able to do this because we're using the latest and greatest bits of technology. Mm -hmm. So think about, you know, what ChatGPT has done for large language models. We're using that kind of capability to predict affordability. So we're not using stale data from a bureau, uh, you know, historical sort of banking type data. Um, we're using real life data um, and using artificial intelligence to score. Um, so, and, and that's essentially the beauty of, of a fintech is we don't have legacy architecture. Mm -hmm. We can plug in and make use of best in breed technology to be able to do this. Um, what we do as um, uh, Fintech South Africa is we scour for perfect partnerships. So um, I think traditionally industry in South Africa is stuck on perfect products. So I must own the customer and I must mine deep and I must bold and I must architect. Um, we're in a perfect partnership world. We, let's go back to this pay shop. It's a four-way win streak. So Electrum wins, MTN wins, um, Investec wins, and the customer wins. So we're able to find commercials, find a legal framework, um, and then essentially, you know, how can we use best-in-breed technology? So Electrum, for example, have best-in-breed payments technology to be able to reduce our cost to serve by using best-in-breed technology. So so that's how we, we play, is we're in the perfect partnership world where the consumer benefits as opposed to perfect product, own everything, lots of technical debt and legacy to be able to manage as well. 
Tell me about your relationship with Investec. You're, you're, you're doing this PayShop, PayShop initiative with Investec. Yeah. Um, I, I take it MTN doesn't have its own banking license. Is that the reason for the Investec partnership? Yeah, so the current... Um, so legally, um, we are bank sponsored by African Bank. So that's for deposit taking. We have a wonderful partner partnership with African Bank. So all of your deposits that sit on a Momo wallet are backed by an institution called African Bank, and that is our banking partner. Mm -hmm. Legally, um, that is that is how any sort of major fintech plays. Um, so they take accountability for that. Um, and then what we're using, um, pay, in order to get integrated into PayShop, you need a bank to be able to integrate you, for example, on the domain registration, um, and all of that. This is in terms of the regulations. Just just in terms of the regulations. And so that's where Investec come in is they will manage the domain registration and they're responsible and accountable for all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and they use that essentially, we use them through Electrum to move money into the Momo wallet, um, which is then settled into African Bank. So okay. it's quite a complex, um, and that's why in our world we are all about perfect partnerships because we also have to very carefully orchestrate you know, how we manage um, all of our partnerships, both legally, um, ethically, um, leveraging technology, reconciliations, etc. So mm -hmm. um, perfect partnerships is not easy. It's quite complex in its nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would it not be easier to apply for your own banking license or is that does that bring too many we, headaches with it? No, no, no. We're, mm -hmm. we're actually really looking forward to, I think, post-elections, the Kofi Bill. Um, what is that? So it's just, it's a new piece of legislation um, that is hoping to make its way through parliament, um, which has a host, I mean, it's it's still really um, undefined for yet. It, it hasn't been legally passed, but it will, it, in my opinion, um, enable a lot of fintech. So it'll, it'll hopefully enable, you know, a little bit more open banking. It'll mm -hmm. enable a lot more interoperability. Um, it should reduce the cost to serve um, as a fintech player, um, we're excited about it. Um, obviously, we have to get through elections and we have to figure out who, um, you know, the new powers uh, that may be. But we have a draft bill. Um, it's making its way through the system. Um, and, and we're very excited to, to see, um, you know, where, where that lands. Um, obviously, we just it's a, it's a bit of a wait see. And, and I think that'll be from a from a catalyst perspective and a democratization of financial services, it is my wish that that then becomes a, a legal mechanism and a bowl that really enables you know competition on the ground for uh, financial inclusion. Okay, and would that then mean if that bill was enacted that you would apply for a banking license or would no longer need to work with banking partners? It technically, it technically would mean that, you know, um, fintechs would be able to be regulated more directly by, you okay. know, the powers that be. Um, obviously, it comes with a lot more governance um, and reporting, which we're very comfortable to take on. Um, but it should allow for, you know, more direct, um, you know, oversight by um, you know, the reg the regulators in South Africa are fintechs directly, mm -hmm. and it should encourage a more sort of open and financially inclusive financial system in South Africa. Have you found, um, I've heard some criticism from other fintechs that um, while South Africa's financial sector is very well regulated, yeah. it's also very highly regulated, and that makes yeah. it difficult for startups in the fintech space to to compete. Is that a fair criticism, do you think? I don't find that a, I don't, I mean, I don't find that a detractor. No. Um, you know, my view on, on all of this is, you know, there's a legal system, there's a framework. Um, it then becomes your duty as a fintech leader um, to find ways to make it work within, within the framework. We haven't found, you know, the regulators or the legal system in South Africa to be um, a hindrance in any way. Okay. Um, we just find a way to innovate through that. Um, and we believe that you should be able to find sort of best in breed technology to navigate through that. So if you think, for example, our registration process makes use of, um, you know, all sorts of data points. Um, it makes use of biometric data. Um, we create a digital identity, ad identity ID for you. Um, um, and so we're using technology to help reduce the cost, for example, of registration. Um, we're using digital payments now. Um, we're using in PayShop a brand new payment system without legacy 
Um, we're using Electrum as a cloud-based platform, which is um, on the grand, grander scheme of things, super cheap. So, mm -hmm. you know, my position on this is I think, uh, and I'm a technologist at heart, um, so I like to think about how can I use technology to actually become even more compliant? Uh, because if you think about the digital world, there's a data crumb across everywhere. So, you know, how do you architect all the way through to your database and your warehouse or whatever? Um, so my view on this is um, I think you could um, think differently as opposed to, you know, just trying to fight uh, the legal framework. Use technology, um, find a win, 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 win scenario, business to business, often it, often it's business to business to business to consumer. Sure. Um, and that's where I would invite, you know, other fintech leaders to think um, at that business to business to business to consumer lens. People that get stuck in that paradigm are going, we have a business to consumer value proposition that works incredibly well. Um, oh, now the regulation doesn't allow for this or whatever. So, then innovate further up the line to find, okay, where's there a business that has solved for that? Mm -hmm. How would that commercial model work? Okay, where's there potentially another technology provider that can help stitch it all together? How do we solve for that? Um, so you're either stuck in a business to business mindset or a business to consumer mindset. You got to think business to business, sometimes to business to consumer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's come back to a Momo and pay shop then. Uh -huh. uh, you mentioned it's limited to funding a Momo wallet at the moment from one of the other banks. Yeah. Um, what are your plans for growing the PayShop offering on the Momo platform? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, as mentioned to you, you know, um, our data shows that our challenge for our consumer base is to get money in. Mm -hmm. Once pe money gets into the ecosystem, you know, consumers are spending mm -hmm. on the ecosystem. Um, so 85% of money that comes in is spent on the ecosystem. For example, you know, the number one features are um, prepaid um, across any network, uh, both voice and data. We're network agnostic. Um, electricity, um, lotto, um, vouchers, etc. And we've built um, essentially a digital ecosystem of all of that. Where our uh, members, Momo sort of members benefit from is we charge zero fees. Mm -hmm. So we make a commission. We're essentially an online retailer and that's how we monetize. Um, but we don't charge you a fee. Um, where traditional incumbents would charge you sort of 50 cent every single time you buy um, prepaid electricity. So if you're buying I mean, if you're buying either electricity or airtime, right. so if you're buying for two rand or five rand, which is what we see in sort of rural South Africa and smaller towns, there's a 50 cent fee on that. Mm -hmm. Every single time you're buying electricity, there's a one rand to two rand fee on that. Every time you're buying a fuel food voucher, there's a fee on that. So our data shows, you know, if you're sort of rural South Africa or a small town um, individual, just by buying your airtime, your electricity, your lotto, your voucher using Momo, you'll save 55 rand. So that's, you know, a cup, that's a loaf of bread almost a week that mm -hmm. you're putting back into the house through those, through, through those savings. Um, and so, you know, our customers have been pining and begging us to say, please make it easier for me to get money into the ecosystem. We love your ecosystem. We want to spend on your ecosystem and save. How do people typically get money into their Momo wallets today? At the moment, it's card to wallet. Um, okay. So you can do sort of a card to wallet funding. That's our number one mechanism. But we also have over 20,000 agents scattered across the country. So you can get money in through an agent um, or an agency as well. Um, but because we're so sophisticated, so it's predominantly card to wallet and then sort of at, at an agent level, so you can do agent deposits and withdrawals as well. Mm -hmm. So those are the, the top two. So someone takes a card to an agent and then tops it up that no, no, way? No, no, so, so if I fund my wallet today... Yeah, um, through your I, bank. Uh, yeah, okay. so I literally would then just follow, um, you know, a card rail and it follows the card processing uh, route. And there can be delays in that reflecting on the Momo account. No, right? no, that comes in real time it's, as well. It's real time yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that comes in real time as well. But if you think about it, um, just so think about consumer adoption. Um, one of the things that, you know, stifles e-commerce is, oh, and I have to put my card details into this weird thing and can I really yeah. trust that? Mm. Um, what we love about PayShop is, um, and again, 
both Bankserve and the Saab have been incredibly progressive, you know, following on, on the footsteps of sort of India and Brazil and PIX is your PayShop ID is your number. Mm. Um, and so, I mean, I think, I, let me show it to you. So, mm -hmm. um, so if I went into PayShop, so mm -hmm. I'd go in on my banking app, a trusted platform behind authentication, bank agnostic, um, I would then find PayShop on my banking app or on the bank's platform inside of registration. I think show, show, the, show your phone uh -huh. to this camera over here. So inside registration. So from your banking app, um, inside your bank app, you'd find PayShop. Um, you'd then put in your number at Momo. Mm -hmm. um, it'll then return back to you um, using PayShop. So empty at Momo to confirm um, your PayShop ID. Um, you then put in the amount. So let's say you just wanted to put in five rand, which would be a tiny. Think about five rand on a credit card seems a little bit strange, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden five rand funding your Momo wallet to buy a quick five rand data, which is free on Momo, makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so do you do you primarily expect consumers to use PayShop to fund their own wallets? Correct. Okay. Correct. Rather um, than rather than third parties providing that, yeah, doing those transfers. Yeah, correct. Okay. Um, and if you think about, I mean, that five rand example, um, like it doesn't make sense to a consumer then to fund a wallet on a credit card for five rand. But now if I wanted to buy a quick data bundle for five rand where I know it's free mm -hmm. on Momo, I can do that. And mm -hmm. it's instant and mm -hmm. it's free for my bank as well. Um, and so, and so, or to buy electricity. So, so we anticipate that there's going to be massive adoption um, in funding the wallet. Remember on Momo as well, um, you can send money and, you know, sending money from one Momo user to another Momo user um, is is free mm. um, as well. So mm. there is a mechanism for you to be able to send that money. And again, I was going to ask, would you use PayShop to send money from Momo to Momo? But you don't really need to because that mechanism already exists. It's free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's free and it, and it exists. Um, and again, we have over 20,000 agents scattered across the country. So... Um, uh, you know, you can, you know, sort of the ability to send money is is pretty much ubiquitous and it's zero rated. What do these agents look like as a matter of interest? Are these spaza shops and, and Correct. The, so that sort of thing? Yeah, so we have different classifications of agents. So, um, you know, we go, the thing about, about MTN, and this is where we're, where we're beautifully positioned inside MTN, is our ground game across the country. I spent... Um, um, September, November, and December traversing across the country. And I was astounded to see our ground game. Mm -hmm. um, we have presence, if you think about sort of prepaid recharges, like our ground game as MTN is phenomenal. Um, we're in regions, we're in townships, we're in spazas, we're everywhere. I mean, the spaza economy is, you know, 180 billion rand. Um, 80% of people in South Africa visit a spaza shop daily. That's 80% of people in South Africa <laughs> visit a spaza shop daily. And that's where you'll find us. Um, so typically you'd find a Momo agent, you know, because we're in the community, we're also trusted, right? So everyone knows, oh, you're my Momo guy. <laughs> um, so there's a, there's a trust element as yes. well there. Yes. Um, um, all of our agents carry some form of branding, you know, a, a hat or whatever as well. So we're easily identifiable. Mm -hmm. um, but the beauty of it is, I mean, our ground game, we just trust the ground game. Um, people know, um, oh, my neighbor, like three doors away is, is like my Momo guy. Mm -hmm. um, and the, there's a profit story on the agent as well, right? So um, <laughs> you underestimate like, like I can go and knock on my neighbor's door at like 10 o'clock at night and essentially I've got like a teller mm -hmm. available um, in real time. Um, <laughs> and so and so our ground game is unbelievable. Um, and, and that's where um, we have the privilege of being a fintech inside the mighty MTN who have presence across the yes. country. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. So just coming back to the, the expanding the value proposition, it's, it's funding in at the moment. What are your plans for 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 allowing uh, Momo customers to use PayShop to pay other people, yeah, or not on the M Momo infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, 
we are we're authentic um and so the main thing that customers have been asking for is money in mm-hmm. 100% on our roadmap as well on money out um uh and we'll follow suit in terms of pricing I mean we're always going to be the cheapest we're going to be way cheaper than than any bank um and free most likely i mean if if i could choose if i could choose a way um it would be free um the difficulty for us as a fintech is we're not a bank mm-hmm. Um, and so it would be easy for a bank technically to say free because it's sitting on the bank's deposits. Deposits. Mm-hmm. Um, there are real costs involved. Um, Electrum, we have to pay Electrum. Mm-hmm. We have to pay Investec for the fee. Um, you know, we um, pay our banking partner in African Bank for holding the deposit. So when we make it free, everything we make free, we bear the cost of which i completely understand in my mind we're architecting towards a business case that says free in free out mm-hmm. um uh that's where we'd want to go um if we i'm quite certain that you know if we um can just out engineer any sort of fraud mechanism as well we've got 20000 agents um 100% it is my ambition to get to free mm-hmm. 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 Good. on on money out bearing in mind that momo to momo is free already and what we're seeing is you know customers sending it our user base is just sending money on momo because the utility on momo is far superior and free mm-hmm. um as compared to any other fintech in south africa we've got funeral on the international remittances we've got loans mm-hmm. um we've got our momo mia mall which is um a micro e-commerce site as well Um so we're continuing to build utility on the platform um and in my mind then you know you know we should be able to get to sort of a free price point because you know I'd rather just compete to keep you on platform um and convince you to spend your or live your best digital life mahala on momo as opposed to getting money out of it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Now, MTN operates not just in South Africa, but in markets across the African continent and parts Great. of the Middle East as well. Uh-huh. Um, and you've launched Momo services in most of and all of those markets. Yeah. Um, just just tell me how the integration works between those markets. If someone's got a Momo account yeah. sitting in uh, uh, Nigeria, for example, yeah. can they simply send money using that Momo account to a South African Momo account holder or is there complications in that? So we are remittance outbound enabled right now. Um, and I'll tell you why. Um, again, we've partnered with a with um a fintech um called Clicksend now so they hold the Adler license um okay. and they're our technical um remittance partner um but if you send so if i um i can right now send money to Nigeria um from Momo to Momo that is instant and in real time wow. um i can send money to from a uh, from Momo South Africa to um for example Zambia momo to momo is is real time and in that momo user in that country can make use of those benefits and spend you know as my counterpart in Zambia has done um they go and scour and you know I trust that they that their momo users can do live their best digital life um in 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 that country um and and the reason we've done that again we just follow the numbers and you know as we we growing mm-hmm. into like uh, both in and outbound both on remittances and on momo but we just follow customer needs and we follow the numbers so um south africa is a 4 billion dollar out market mm-hmm. we're a net send with very little money coming in um and so the customer need is to send um and what we've done is we've done that on a launch fee of sort of 4%. So mm-hmm. if you think about incumbents they're charging 10% on the remit. Oh. Ours is 4%, so you're sending $100, 104. Um uh incumbents would be 108 and then the recipient would only get net of, you know, what the exchange rate might be. Mm. Um, I'm sure that's loaded a little bit as well sometimes by our, the banks. Ours yeah. is super flat. Mm-hmm. Um so um Yeah, we're all for transparency and we're all for uh, because we're using best in breed technology. We also we, we don't have um legacy technical debt and we also don't have legacy fees to protect. Mm-hmm. Um we're starting from zero. 
So, you know, every cent we make is new. Yes. Um, every rand we make is new. And your desire is to win market share, so you don't want to set the fees up here. Yeah, yeah. Rather set them as low as possible. So we'd rather come in and allow users to adopt. Um, I often say this, so, um, <laughs> you know who has money in South Africa? Businesses. You know who doesn't have money in South Africa? Consumers. Um, and I say this to my team, is how can we find a business-to-business -business relationship that makes sense commercially um, so that we can save the consumer as much as possible in order to democratize access. Um, so businesses in South Africa have money, consumers are stretched. So, mm -hmm. you know, how can we find a business to business relationship commercially that makes sense between the parties, leveraging best in breed technology to save the consumer as much mm -hmm. as possible. One of the reasons I was asking about international remittances on Mo Momo is that Banks of Africa announced just, I think, a few weeks ago uh, that they were working on a new platform, the name of which I can't remember, uh, that's similar to PayShop that allows um, international real-time payments yeah. um, to other African markets. Yeah. That platform that OpenSurf, uh, OpenSurf that um, Banks of Africa is mm. is developing, is, is there utility in that for Momo, do you think? Oh, absolutely. So again, it, it boils back down to the Saab 2025 vision, which speaks about interoperability, um, innovation, payments. Um, and again, I'm very proud of our Reserve Bank for really taking charge of this and saying, you know, we want to ensure that there's financial inclusion I mean, obviously recognizing, you know, 4 billion rands worth of remittances. Mm -hmm. um, and so our job then as a fintech provider is to scour the regulatory environment as well as the, techno the technological environment and then to find a partnership that works mm -hmm. um, to be able to do that. We want to reduce the cost to serve, leverage the best technology, um, make it as instant and real um, for real value derivement and utility on platforms. So um, best believe that if that then becomes a reality, we'll be on that like white on rice. Okay, okay, good. And then just lastly, before I let you go, uh, um, Brad, uh, in, in your announcement about the PayShop initiative, yep. you stated that um, or reference was made to what's happening in the Indian market, yeah. um, which is at the forefront of mobile yeah. payments in many respects around yeah. the world. Um, what do you think the South African fintech market can learn from what's going on in India? Oh, such a beautiful use case. So, I mean, UPI in India, um, remember I mentioned we're sort of at a 56, 57% card payment rate in South Africa. Um, digital payments in India, 80% of them happen via UPI, mm. which is the version of PayShop Pay in India. So 80% of digital payments today are happening um, using, using PayShop. Another interesting point, you know, a big driver of that was an integration of Jio um, into PayShop as well um, for derivement of everything VAS related, airtime relate, um, related. Um, and so we needn't look further than just standing on the shoulders of two BRICS countries, India and Brazil. Mm -hmm. Um, and I love what the Saab is doing is looking at that and, you know, following suit. It is my wish then that um, in South Africa um, and as essentially BRICS nations, we will teach the world how to do real time rapid payments. We will teach the world. I mean, we've already taught the world on mobile money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we in Africa account for over 50 percent of all mobile money wallets. Um, so we've already dominated in um, at, on a global stage. And I think people don't give us enough credit as Africans for that. Um, but now in really this next evolution of, you know, Web3 where my identity is my own and I control my data and how I manage my money is going to be digitized as well. I think between India, Brazil, and soon South Africa watch this space. Mm -hmm. Like we will teach the world about digital payments, financial inclusion, um, and how to really democratize financial services right down to any corner of South Africa. And does crypto have a role to play in any of this, in your view? Absolutely. I mean, if you think me, if, if you ask me, you know, what are the best use, uh, use cases for sort of blockchain and that type of technology, um, I think um, digital contracts. So, you know, how do we engineer estates? How do we engineer ownership? Um, if you think about properties in South Africa, um, like in Soweto, there's a home, but there are, you know, sub leases, um, you know, 
in the backyard, you know, there's a room or whatever. Um, the banks don't know how to do that. Um, or in fact, the entire system doesn't know how to do that. So how can we use technology um, on the blockchain to sort of help digitize that contract enforcement? Mm -hmm. And how could I use technology, for example? So I've got my property, I've got three people living on my property. This person like comes and goes, um, imagine a world where you can digitally enforce that contract and digitally enforce that payment. Um, and then if my property, if I then die and it's not, you know, legally registered at a deeds office, how does this seamlessly, you know, in my estate just pass on to, um, you know, my next of kin or whatever. I think that's probably the biggest use case in uh, like property ownership, title ownership, uh, digitally enforcement of contracts, um, I think that's where I'm hoping we can go. Okay. And from a transactional perspective, do you, I, I mean, do, does the Reserve Bank kind of frown on that sort of thing? I, we've seen retailers like Pick and Pay, for example, saying we'll accept Bitcoin at the point of sale now. Uh -huh. Is there any pressure or any interest from consumers that you're seeing to embrace uh, any sort of crypto as a as a payment mechanism inside Momo? Or is that something which perhaps much further in the future? I think it's I think it's a little, the adoption in South Africa is, is far off. Okay. Um, um, we are, as consumers in South Africa, um, trust is very important to us. Um, and so the banks have done a very good job of building trust with consumers. We're doing a brilliant job now as Momo in South, South Africa to ensure, you know, <clears throat> trust using technology like biometrics and all these kinds of things just mm -hmm. to give you the assurance that your your money is safe and secure and the digital products and services that you buy from us are backed by super technology providers. So for example, um, Jumo on the loan, Sunlam and Suntam on insurance. Um, and so we partner with trusted entities. I think there's a little bit of a way to go on, you know, trusting Bitcoin and all of these mm -hmm. things per se. I think if you build the utility on a use case, for example, on land ownership and rights ownership, um, you know, regarding an asset transfer, I think that's where you're going to have to win. You're going to have to build a utility that makes sense at a consumer level. Smart contracts rather than Smart contracts. transactional crypto. Rather than selling like crypto, this mm -hmm. is how good crypto is, this is how good the blockchain is. Mm -hmm. Build a utility that makes sense to the consumer, to the underserved consumer. And I think that's how we're going to win, not just in South Africa, mm -hmm. but in Africa. Fascinating conversation. Bradwin Roper is CEO of FinTech at MTN South Africa. Thanks so much for sharing your insights with Tech Central today. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers.